because I do remember like five minutes before then. <laughs> so if you missed the class, you missed my amazing explanation with uh, Superman, how fast Superman is changing, leaving, coming back becomes again Clark Kent. To catch that moment, that instantaneous change, that's what we call instantaneous change, you need to shrink moment in time or whatever you're doing, that's my input, to zero. So shrinking it to zero means using a limiting position. H goes to zero and only then you can catch those small or fast processes like Superman changing, uh, you know, the um, chemical reaction or microbacteria uh, talking to another bacteria, bacteria talk to each other if you don't know that. So all these processes were captured using limits where age is a small change. If this limit exists in X in a domain, this is how we define a derivative, monotations F prime, that's the notation I'm using all the time, F prime, that is derivative. DF over DX, D should be like this, straight. In calculus three, we teach this D, that's different. That is also a derivative. Then uh, if it's not F, maybe it's called Y, DY over DX, that is also a derivative. This is one notation, so you don't, it, you don't see it as a fraction here. It's not division here, it's a notation. So it's international notation. Y prime, and then in America they like this weird one, which is not actually internationally used, but people know it exists. D, because of derivative, sub Y F of X. That is, that is a weird notation. So I don't use the last one. I usually use the first four, and the first one is the fastest one, so I use that one quite a lot. But the second one uh, has more details because you can differentiate with respect to different variables. And that's why DF over DX is so good that it shows what we're doing. So this is what I teach students how to do fast, uh, how to do the homework faster and be better on the exams. Look at this. When you read the problem and you're like, I don't know what to do, it says, find slope of this, 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 and blah, blah, blah. You should have a trigger. Slope means derivative. That's it. They want you to differentiate. They say, this uh, ball was jumping on the floor with the given blah, blah, distance. Find speed or velocity. It should trigger you. They want you to find derivative. So that's how you should have this kind of reflex. Uh, if you ever take um, business calculus class, we do marginal. Marginal of cost, revenue, and profit functions. When they ask students, please find marginal of the profit of your business, selling apples on the street. That means they want you to find derivative. And of course, what is the rate of change, la la la, population of the city of Tempe? They want to find derivative. Rate and per, this per means change. Change means derivative. If they tell you how fast the car was driving from A to B, that is derivative. And we were defining it as instantaneous rate of change. So these kind of uh, many, many more examples, but this is what you see in your homework and what we give you on the test. If you freak out during the exam, you have exam anxiety, but at least you remember what I told you. Okay, she said slope is derivative. At least you know how to start. You take the derivative. Now, if derivative exists, f prime exists at a, then the function is called differentiable. Differentiable. R. At a. So having a derivative means to be differentiable. Having no derivative means not differentiable. And then we did teach you what continuity means. You already had your first quiz. By the way, who did not submit the quiz? How come? Talk to me after class. No, I submitted. Oh, you submitted the quiz because you were like, eh. Who submitted the quiz? Yeah, yeah. How did, who did not submit the quiz? There's still like five people that submit the quiz. Those are easy points. You should be able to do that. So approach me after class to submit the quiz. And you should not be late. So continuous function, you remember you put a pencil, you don't get out of it, or there was a function saying if the limit exists and f of a is the same, then the function is continuous. So there's a shortcut for this. If a function is differentiable, then at that point, function is continuous. So if derivative exists, function is continuous, but not the other way around, unfortunately, because uh, you should remember derivative does not exist derivative doesn't doesn't exist at sharp corners or cusps sharp corners or angles cusps 
So, very interesting. If you have a graph of the function and it looks like smooth, smooth, smooth derivative exists and it's continuous, and then it's like phew, goes down. No derivative at that corner. It goes fine, down or up. So, no, so derivative crossing. Derivative crossing. At these sharp corners, there is no derivative. And that is the contradiction, it's not a contradiction, but again, if function has a derivative, the function is continuous at that place. But being continuous doesn't mean necessarily mean to have a derivative. What is the famous example you know with a sharp corner of the graph? Yes? Absolute value. Yes, good job. Absolute value. Do you all remember that? Absolute value of x, y equals absolute value of x. Looks like so. It is continuous everywhere. I can put a pencil and go through with no problem. But it has no derivative, so it's example. For example, um, for f of x, which is absolute value of x, there is no derivative at 0. Because at 0, there's a sharp corner. So that's also, you will see it. Pretty interesting that mathematics actually likes smoothness. Something should be smooth, and it should just slow, like a wave going up and down. We don't like cusps. And usually to work with these things, we need to break into pieces right before the cusps, cusps and right after. We can do things, but cusps, just hard to work with them. That is the thing. And finally, I will give you some nice, interesting explanations. So I told you derivative also means uh, steepness, right? Uh, did I put it here? Well, slope, velocity, steepness. Okay, I could put steepness also. How steep is your height? For example, so steep. I guess it's not very official terminology, so it's fine. Let's just have an example. So here's the graph of the function. Something random and then going down and then up. So when I'm hiking this mountain, over here, when I put a pencil and my my pencil is going up, that means function is increasing there. The derivative here will be positive. Positive derivative means positive slope. So if the steepness of the mountain is 45 degrees, it's a steep mountain, that kind of the idea. So something is increasing, derivative will be positive. I reach the top of the mountain. Here it is. It's not steep at the top. It's finally the peak of the mountain. So derivative here is zero. Because what is the steepness of the floor? There's zero steepness on the floor, and it is the peak of the mountain. You finally reach it, you can breathe normally. There is no steepness there. Then you're going down. Guess what the derivative will tell you. What kind of steepness if it's going down the hike? Negative. Good job. Negative derivative indicates that something is decreasing. So let's write it down. Increasing, I-N-C-R, usually increasing, decreasing. And then zero is just zero. So zero derivative, zero slope. So that is why we're going to be using derivative quite a lot to find where the profit of the function, the profit of the business is increasing, decreasing, where the building is going steeper or sharper, when it's hike and so on. Lots of applications. Yes. Yeah. This one. So that is one of the most important applications of derivative that it shows you is the population of bacteria increasing or decreasing. Or for example, you keep checking the tumor in the brain of the patient every other week, and then you keep checking the size of it. If it starts decreasing, that's a good news for the patient, the derivative will be negative. So you can check that. There's lots of lots of cool applications on this. And then uh, let's see more over here. So decreasing, again here, derivative is zero. Hiking up and quite very sharp hike. Derivative is positive, increasing, then going down, derivative is negative, and then at the sharp corner, D and E does not exist. So at the sharp corner, derivative does not exist, even though the function is continuous. So, And that's kind of pretty cool, that derivative can show you lots of information about stuff.
That's why it's so important. And in 3D, it's even more interesting how the waves and the ocean are changing and how sharp they are. Done with this. All done, all done, because I want to switch. And now we're finally starting 1.5, basic rule of differentiation. So now you know kind of the intuition, why it's important. Let's finally find a derivative. This topic, students usually like this topic, so basic differentiation rules is a very nice topic. We need to teach you how to actually find derivative of the function, and then you will learn how to analyze positive, negative, what does it mean? Concavity will show up soon. Something is concave up, concave down, increasing, decreasing. So if derivative tells you how fast something is changing, and then there's a constant c, constant is not changing. Derivative of constant is zero. Does it make sense, right? Constant is constant. That's named constantin, if you remember. That means being constant. So derivative of a constant is zero. For example, you can put example here. For example, how fast, remember I told you those keywords, how fast something is changing. How fast number five is growing. Number five is not growing. It stays five all the time. So the answer is zero. Yes, this is one of the notation I showed you. D over dx either standing like so separated or dc over dx. That is also, you can write it like so. That is the same thing. So it's called derivative of c with respect to x. That's how we say it. And then to explain you even more this idea of the d constant, I can draw to you what does it mean to be constant? It means you have a horizontal line, y equals c. How steep is this line? Zero steep. It's not a hike. It's just a floor. So it makes sense that derivative there is zero. When you differentiate exponents, uh, in this case polynomials, x to the n, what happens is you take n, put it down, multiply, and then decrease n by 1. Decrease n by 1. So we're going to practice this right now quite a lot. It will be fun. Exponential function. Exponential function grows so fast. It's a such a rare case. When you ask how fast is exponential function, the answer is fast how itself. So how fast e to the x is changing? e to the x. That's pretty cool that e to the x is the only function that doesn't change when you differentiate it. And I will tell you a very old Russian joke about this in a second. Logarithmic function, though, it's interesting. First of all, logarithm does not exist for negative or zero, so x should be positive. And when you differentiate logarithm function, it gives you 1 over x. We're going to practice that too. And finally, the couple, sine and cosine. Since they always go together, they give each other when you differentiate them. Remember that sine is a wave and cosine is the wave. They are exactly the same, just different by the shift. So how fast sine is? Cosine fast. How fast cosine is? Minus sine. You should remember, sine is a normal guy, and zero is a zero, derivative gives you positive, and more actual normal properties. Cosine is a troublemaker. At zero, it's not zero, and derivative is negative, and there's also more stuff happening with cosine. So that's how I'll usually explain it. This is the couple. And you should remember these formulas, and they're going to be more. Let's practice. 5 to the x. No, what did I say? x to the 5. x to the 5 prime. How fast is this polynomial? You take your 5, and you put it down. And by putting down, I mean you multiply by 5. Keep the x, and now you will have 5 minus 1. Oops. 5 minus 1. Usually you don't write the steps like so carefully. You just immediately know it's 5x to the 4. Put it in the box. It's a good habit to put it the answer in the box. So 5 goes down, x to the 4. Logarithmic function, what is derivative? You see I'm doing prime this time. Prime, ln x prime is 1 over x. So that is examples of number two and number four. This is the first example, by the way, probably should write down. They forgot to write it down here. The first example, this one, uh, it has a famous name. It's called a power rule. A power rule. 
other one don't really have. The first one is constant rule, but this is the famous name, power rule. People know what power rule means. Okay, let's play with these things. So, very interesting. What is derivative of 57? Well, how do you know it's zero? It's a constant. How fast the constant changes? Zero fast. So that is the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Mountain? Yeah, uh, the, the peak is a constant number. So yeah, exactly. I actually was curious if people understood this. You hiking something up, get to the top, and now it's flat there. You're going down. If you don't imagine the flatness, you should see at the top of the mountain, it's neither hiking up, not hiking down. You are at the top. So or at the bottom, same thing. If you're going down, you hit the bottom. That's the pit, right? You neither decreasing not increasing, so that's why the steepness there is zero. Tangent line is just a line. Yeah, it's just a line like so. Yes. And if you drop the ball, for example, here, it will go up, down, up, down, and then at some point will stabilize because there is no slope there. It's zero. Yeah, that's a very good question. So, what is the derivative of seven point five pi? <laughs> Are you sure it's not 7.5? It's zero, because pi also is a constant, right? So don't get confused. You'll see that in your homework as well. Both are constants. But what is x to the 57? To the power 56. All agree? So this, like, this should be satisfying class. If you pay attention, this actually finally makes sense. Some, finally, something makes sense in this class. Derivatives are awesome, people usually like it. Okay, more two. How about negative exponents? So what? Negative is negative. X to the minus three. Doesn't matter. You take this minus three, you put it down. Minus three. Don't forget to put parentheses. It might, makes much better. X to the minus two? No, minus, four. minus four. Because minus three and minus one is minus four. So it increases by absolute value, but uh, it decreases by one. Make sense? So be careful with that. But it still works, same idea. So basically nothing new here. Square root of x, usual students get confused with that, and you guys don't like radicals, so I'm not surprised. Square root of x, rewrite it as x to what power? One half, good job. Then I did not differentiate yet, so I have to keep the parentheses and the prime notation. Until you differentiate, you have to write down the prime. Just like with limits, until you plug in you have to keep writing limit. Do you have to show this step? Like no. If you know how to do it faster, don't have to. Now the rule is still the same. One half goes down x to what? Negative one half. Exactly. I'll make a note only once so you have good notes because I will do bc. One half minus one is negative one half. You will do some fractions in this chapter, so get used to it. For example, x to the minus 3 quarters. Yeah, it is a fraction and it is negative. So what? Don't be scared. You take it and you put it down. That's like the first step. Put it down. Minus 3 quarters. Put parentheses. Don't forget. That will uh, lead you not to make mistakes with a negative sign. Copy your x. And now you don't know what to do, so either you take a pencil and do it separately, or you write down like so, minus 3 quarters, minus 1. And you're like, I'm not good with fractions. This is so bad. Not really. This is how you should see it. Minus 3 quarters, minus 4 quarters. 1 can be anything you want. 5 over 5, 7 over 7, 100 over 100. So if you have 3 quarters, make it 4 quarters. Minus 3 over 4 and minus 4 over 4 is Minus 7 over 4. And this is how you don't make mistakes. Minus 3 quarters, put parentheses, x to the minus 7 over 4. What do you think about this? Should I stop for a second? How do you feel about this? Let's make some interesting explanation. What is derivative of x? Somehow students get always lost here. What is the derivative of x? One. One or zero. So first of all, maybe you should think about the speed, but that's not very clear. The formula, the formula says put something down and then decrease by one, but what is that? Sometimes people can see this x to the one. 
Then one goes down and x will be one minus one. X to the minus one. X to the one minus one is x to the zero. And that is one. That makes sense from this point of view, so power rule still works. From the point of view of the graph, it also makes sense. If you draw a line, y equals x, it's exactly the line that goes diagonally like so from the first quadrant to the third quadrant. What is how steep this hike is? It's exactly one steep. So derivative is one increasing, is positive, and it's exactly have steepness one. That is also the way to see it. And it was a funny story. One of the professor in Georgia, he was retiring. He was like 70 years old. And he brought his grandson, four years old grandson in class, and he was doodling something. And he told him, his grandson, okay, in class, when I call your name, you should get up and say, it's one grandfather, one. Do you remember? Remember, okay. And then he was teaching this class, and then he asked what is the derivative of x, and nobody answered. And he's like, Jeremy, do you know what derivative of x is? And he's quitting draw drawing, doodling, and get up like, it's one grandfather, one. And everyone was super impressed by this. So that's how I remember his story. It was very funny how he was telling this story. So now you know, derivative of x is one. What is derivative of one over x? But how do you know? Exactly. This is the best way of seeing it. It's x to the minus one. And then you do exactly what we just did with power rule. So what are you saying? Minus. I would do like this. Minus goes down. So minus one, parentheses. x minus one minus one gives you minus two. This is the correct answer, but nicely written answer will be minus one over x squared. Both answers are acceptable. You can keep both. We actually never tell you like, hey, write down the fraction. Not really. Minus x to the minus two is also fine. So some, most time people just remember one over x is minus one over x squared. Interesting that the denominator increased by one exponent and the negative sign show up. Right? Yes. Properties. Okay. This is something uh, I'm hopefully good in explaining. So usually students get confused and then they're like, okay, I get it. If you have a function you want to differentiate, but it's multiplied by constant c. Constant c, when you differentiate it separately, gives you zero. But when it is multiplied by a function, it's like a sticker. It should stay there. So it's a sticker multiplied by a function. Keep it there. You keep it there and differentiate the function separately while the sticker is standing and waiting for you to finish differentiating the function. Then finally, Oh, well, that's actually, that's all. So you just differentiate the function separately. Sticker does not go away because it's glued to the function by multiplication. This is one way to explain it. So let's write down that C is a constant. Or this way to explain. When constant is standing separately by itself, like five, speed of that constant is zero. When you differentiate, this is zero. But when constant is multiplied by a function, that is a rate of change now. It shows you how fast this function is increasing or decreasing, how fast the bacteria are multiplied, how fast the cancer is spreading. So now it actually represents the speed. So that's why it's not zero anymore. For example, see the difference? 30 is multiplied by x squared, or 30 is added to the x squared. The difference here is, if 30 is multiplied by x squared, it's a sticker glued to x squared. So I will keep it alive. I'm not going to kill it to 0. And then I will just differentiate x squared separately, x squared prime. That will be, that gives me 30 multiplied. What is derivative of x squared? Do you all agree? It's 2x to the 1, right? So it's 2x. And you finally can simplify it to 60x, thank you. So see the difference? 30 is multiplied by x, so it's glued to it. So it has to survive. Versus 30 is added to x squared. That is isolated, isolated, isolated. Ted. 
So it's lonely standing constant. What is the speed of the lonely standing constant? It is zero plus the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So this answer is actually 2x. See the difference? Multiplied should stay, added should be killed to zero. Do you know that in the United States they give you training before they allow you to teach? And they told us not to use words, kill the constant, and so on. They say don't uh, promote violence in the classrooms. So we're supposed to say cancel out or eliminate. Let's use this fancy word, eliminate. You know, it feels even more Somehow it does, they told us it does. So you see, it's important. They teach us which words to use carefully. So we're not killing anything, okay? We are eliminating. Eliminating to zero. Now, more properties. If you have the sum or difference of functions, you can just differentiate separately, each function separately. That is a nice looking property. So that's exactly what I did in this example. 30 plus x squared. I just differentiated separately 30. It gave me 0. x squared gave me 2x. And that gave me the sum. That's a nice property. What is derivative? Oh, I was supposed to ask. Pretend you did not see. <laughs> oh, I forgot to delete this. I see. What is derivative for fix 50x? So 50 is multiplied by x, thus it should survive, right? Because it represents the rate. But then what is derivative of x? One. So 50x gives you 50. That makes sense from the graph here. So let me show you step by step. So y equals x is here. If I want to draw y equals 50x, it is 50 times steeper hike than y equals x. So it will be like so, 50 times harder to hike this curve, this line, than the original one. Thus, what is the steepness of y equals x? One, what is the steepness of 50x? 50. So this 50 that was glued to x shows you the change, shows you that the steepness increased that's kind of the idea here. But again, derivative. OK, let me show you this. Yeah, this is a nice note. Note, I will repeat this, but uh, why not? Note, derivative of 50 is 0. zero. Derivative of 50 plus x is 1. 0 plus 1, so that is 1. But then derivative of 50x is 50. Observe the difference. In the speed of a constant, actually today I have this thing, because I was teaching with it in capital 3. Okay. Derivative of the constant is 0. Derivative of the constant plus 50x is 0 plus 1, so it's 1. But derivative of 50x, that is product here, it's a sticker, it should survive, it's a 50 times plus. That is a difference. Pretty cool. Finally, yeah, I was supposed to. Let's do the whole nice long example. And you know, I just realized that's why I kind of uh, stopped for a second. I realized I did not finish the previous lecture. <laughs> we were supposed to give the example of the equation of the line, don't you remember? I just remember it right now. On Wednesday, we started the equation of the line and we never actually finished it. We should go back at some point and do it probably at the end of the class. But I don't want to kind of switch the topic right now. So, because I gave you steps, but I never show you how to use them. We should do that. I will teach you how to take derivatives fast in a fast and convenient way. So you'll be much better on the exams and homework than other students. Usually my students are faster. For example, f of x is 7x cubed minus 32 over 17x plus 1 quarter x to the 4. What? What? Chris, you have to sit closer. I never can hear you. <laughs> Sorry, is this the tangent line? Oh, no, no, that's just an example. <laughs> sorry, I sort of no, sorry, I actually cannot hear you. That's funny. And I should not keep asking what. I should say, would you mind repeat the question, please? <laughs> 
That's also a bad Russian habit to ask what all the time. X raised to the three fifths. So for now it's just a function. Plus, let's keep going, let's not end yet. Plus pi x squared minus 1,000 plus, you see I'm getting crazy, sine x plus 1 over x. Finally, plus 17 pi. Done. Let's differentiate that. Find f. And also, keep moving farther and farther. You used to be a front lane. You should be here. <laughs> so, let's do that. And then the book teaches you, you should do it piece by piece. No, screw that. Let's do it right away. Too slow. They teach you here so slow, all this stuff. You can do it. I don't know why they babysit students here. You can do it. I know it for years that the American students are very smart. If you show how to do it fast, they do it fast. 7x cubed gives you what? 21x squared. 21x squared. Do you know how we did it? 7 times 3, right? 3 goes down, multiply by 7, 21x, decrease by 1, becomes 2. Does that make sense? Minus 32 over 17x. 32 over 17. X gives you 1. So see the difference. This one is multiplied, so the constant should survive. But the derivative of X is 1. Plus, what is 1 quarter X to the 4 gives you? X to the power of 3. But too fast for students who did not get it. Let's see. 1 quarter, maybe write down. 1 quarter multiplied by 4 goes down. X decreased by 1, 3. One quarter times four cancels out. X cubed stays. That's a very nice thing. Now, X to the three fifths. Three fifths, five, X to the negative three fifths. Exactly. Three fifths goes down, multiplied. X to the three, this is how I say it. Three over five minus five over five. Because it's minus one. Three over five minus five over five is minus two over five. Make sense? Changed. Let me stop for a second to let me know if it is too fast, what do you think? Because I'm not here to like brag that I'm good at this. But the thing is, uh, all of you after this homework will be that good. It's inevitable. You just need to do, I did hundreds of examples. You also need to do hundreds of examples to be that good and you will be doing it anyways. So you will be, you will see. Plus, what is pi x squared? So 2 pi x, let's see why, pi times 2 x, right? 2 goes down, x to the first. What is minus 1,000? Zero. Zero. Because the constant standing there isolated. What sine gives you? Cosine. So remember, sine and cosine give you each other. Cosine gives you sine, sine gives you cosine. But 1 gives you negative. Sine gives you plus cosine. Cosine gives you minus sine. So this one is plus. When you differentiate sine, it gives you plus cosine. 1 over x, we did it already. Who remembers the shortcut? Minus 1 over x squared. Minus 1 over x squared. But if you do it slowly, you take a pencil right now. You do like so. This is x to the minus 1. Minus 1 goes down. x will be raised to the minus 2. And you can keep it like this. That's not a mistake. 17 pi to the third. Zero. I thought 3 should go down and it will be pi squared. Why it is 0? It's, it's a constant, exactly. Or all, all agree? So let me show you. This was a constant and this was a constant. See, we did it pretty fast. And now you kind of supposed to simplify. If we ask you to simplify, let's rewrite it nicely without zeros. 21x squared. Minus 32 over 17 plus 1 quarter simplifies with 4 x cubed minus 3 fifths x to the minus 2 fifths plus 2 pi x plus cosine x minus 1 over x squared. That is the answer. I'm going to put this in the box so visually I can find it later if I need it. And we will be needed some of these answers in the future. How do you like that? Not too bad. 
Yeah. Well, I'm not sure actually if it's not Tibet. It's up to you to know. Yes. This one? So uh, this one is uh, this guy. Uh, and this guy came from 1 over x. So let me do again here. 1 over x prime is minus, no, is x to the minus 1 prime. And then the power rule works. Minus 1 goes down, x is multiplied, x is raised to the minus 2. And then if you check lecture 0, I was reviewing what does it mean to have negative exponents. Minus will be still minus. Because it's negative as exponent, x should go to the denominator, and then it's going to be positive 2 at the bottom. So it's 1, it's minus 1 over x squared. Good question. Thank you for asking. It's here. So this was good. Now, one more confusing thing for students is this example. Example 2. Let's call this one 1. How about if there's a constant in the at the top, like so, square root of 13, that is not b, that's 13, over x cubed. Prime means let's differentiate. How fast this function is. So, I don't know, that's weird. What would you do? So you do... Uh, over x uh, 4 to the power 4. Yeah, yeah, the answer is correct, but how did you do? Uh, but what to do with the square root of 13? It's just a sticker. Just as you it's a sticker, right. So let's write it down. I like how you, I can see that you're thinking from the end and then you go backwards. Square root of 13 is multiplied by 1 over x to the third. And then we did not differentiate yet. That is still just sim rewriting. It's not even simplifying. We're just rewriting things. So now it looks like what we had before, but still 1 over x cubed looks a little bit complicated. Maybe let's rewrite more. x to the minus 3? That looks doable. Because now we know what to do. Square root of 13 is multiplied. It's a sticker. It should survive. Let's keep it. It's a speed. It actually says rate of change. Multiplied by the derivative of x to the minus 3. So minus 3 goes down. x to the minus 2. Which one? Minus, minus 4. Good job. So you decrease by 1. Remember, minus 3 minus 1 gives you minus 4. You can keep it like this. Or if you want to rewrite, it will be minus 3 square root of 13 over x to the 4. Both answers are correct. So I would not actually choose one versus another one. Uh, it's fine. So that is also a good one. And one more example. We like to put this example in the test, so pay attention on this one. Maybe even make a note about this. Somehow this is a very popular example for the test. We give you a long fraction, and then you're not supposed to overthink this. And that's uh, what uh, is, you know, creative way of taking derivatives. We will learn how to do quotient product, uh, quotient derivative, so how to work with fractions later. But this one actually does not require that. So how to take derivative of the quotient, that's going to be next chapter. But in this case, look at that. This is a fraction. It has one thing in the denominator, x to the 4. So actually, you can rewrite it as a several fractions. The first fraction is 3x to the 5 over x to the 4. The second will be minus 2x to the 4 over x to the 4. And the last one is minus 7x to the over x to the 4. So you break it into the small fractions. Usually we do the other way around. We create common denominator. And this one we are breaking into smaller fractions to make differentiation easier. Differentiation, thank you, is still going on. We did not differentiate yet. So we are rewriting. Rewrite. You, you're good. That's a good point. And then let's simplify x to the 5 and x to the 4 gives you x. So it's just 3x. Derivative of 3x is super simple. That is already good. Minus 2. 
x to the 4 and x to the 4 completely goes away, so it's just minus 2. And minus 7, x cubed and x to the 4 gives you 1 over x, because x to the 4 is in a denominator. We did not differentiate yet. Now we're going to differentiate. But I will make a house. What do you think? Does this make sense? I simplify it into three fractions. And now derivative of this, what do you think is that? 3, three because 3x three gives you 3, then 0. zero. And the last one? Then positive 7 over x to the power of 2. Or the power of 2. Yes, amazing. How did we do minus 7 times 1 over x? Minus 7, let me increase, minus 7 times 1 over x prime. We can rewrite it as minus 7 x to the minus 1 prime. And that is minus 7 multiplied by minus 1 x to the minus 2. Minus 2. Minus 7 minus 1 gives you plus. And then x to the minus 2 is 1 over x squared. So the answer is 3 plus 7 over x squared. So this is the fastest way to do it. Instead of seeing as a huge fraction, you break into smaller fractions and work with that. Pretty cool. Last kind of pretty cool thing which I found for you to show is, so let's do it. Higher order derivatives. Higher order derivatives means I can take more derivatives than one derivative. I can take second derivative, fifth derivative, and thousandth derivative. So if y is distance, the first derivative gives you velocity. How fast did my distance change from this uh, table to that door when I walk? That gives you my speed. For example, if the original function is, what was it? 10x cube, 10x cube, then the first derivative, which is speed, will be 30x squared, 10 times 3, x to the 2. Now, sometimes they ask me to differentiate second time. The, how fast the speed is changing when you drive the car? How fast the speed is changing? That's acceleration. So when you push the, actually, not only gas, but brake as well, that is changing the speed. That either positive acceleration or negative acceleration, which is so, right? So derivative of 30x squared will be 60x. That is my acceleration. Very rarely known in math, but physicists and biologists to use it is third derivative. What, how fast the acceleration changes? How interesting is that question? That's what you call Jones. Jones? Jones? Third derivative. What is derivative of 60x? That is just 60. As you can see with the polynomial case, we keep shrinking. What are going to be the fourth derivative now? What is derivative of this? Zero. So the next derivative will be zero. Let's see. The fourth derivative, if you check Wikipedia, calls it jerk, which is very interesting. Jerk. And after the third derivative, people stop putting um, primes because it's going to be too messy. How many primes you want to put, right? So the internationally, we only put up to three. And then we put a number of the derivative, but not to mix it up with exponent, we put it in parentheses. So this means Fourth derivative, if you write this in Japan right now, and y raised to the 4 with parentheses, they will know, oh, you mean it's derivative. Fourth derivative, which is jerk, remember we started with distance, is 0. And then I googled others. Look at that, how funny is that? Fifth derivative called crackle. That is how fast, how fast, how fast, how fast of the rate of change, of rate of change, of rate of change, of rate of change of the distance. How funny is that? That is called crackle. What is derivative of 0? zero so when you differentiate zero it still gives you zero so all second all other derivatives will be zeros how fast the crackle changes it pops pretty interesting six derivative is called pop and seven derivative is called log that is pretty cool pretty cool idea but uh, to be honest you can take as many derivatives as you want and in general notation looks like so let me write down in the red infinitely many derivatives you take n derivative, put in parentheses. So that is the notation of n's. n, t, h. No, like so, actually. n, t, h, derivative. 
What? Why is one of them F25? Yeah, no, just they just decided on this like this. The notation just decided hmm, around the world like so. Very interesting idea that the physicists apparently they use lots of derivatives. Oh, 25, that was just a random example. Yeah, this one I, you don't have to do. Thank you. Okay, I thought you were yeah, six, five, we have also six, f to the six, f to the six is also zero, and so on. Now, Last thing, put it in the notes, our derivatives are of uh, matrix. So derivative of sine gives you cosine. Let me use the laser again. First and foremost, we'll be using the picture. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is minus sine. Cosine is cosine. Derivative of sine of tangent is secant squared. Derivative of cotangent is minus cosecant squared. Derivative of secant copies itself, gives you tangent. Cosecant copies itself with negative, gives you cotangent. You will have to memorize them all. I know it's a struggle, but uh, the most popular are the one I put in the boxes. This is the one we like to test. The others one are additional one, but at least you need to know sine, cosine, tangent, and secant. Cosecant and cotangent are actually not very popular. But you need to know these four. You will see them quite a lot, and they are actually used a lot, specifically in medicine and biology. Because lots of processes in human body or in nature are repetitive. Sine and cosine represents oscillations or repetitive processes. How fast these processes change means taking derivative. So if you're working with cosecant, you need to know how to find derivative of that if that represents how fast the population of deers are changing in the Yellowstone during the summer. So that is why we need to know these things. Questions? What do you think? Was this class not too bad? Yeah, good job. And do your homework on time. Have a good weekend. See you on Wednesday.